A serial killer, strictly speaking, is a person who kills at least two people in distinct incidents that take place at various times. Even though there is no official definition of serial murder in the law, the crimes of serial killers are frequently picked up on by the media and the general public, especially when there are numerous victims or the killings are carried out in a graphic manner. The list that follows discusses some of the most infamous serial killers that have ever existed. First on the list is Jack the Ripper, although we refer to him as Jack the Ripper, we don't actually know who was responsible for one of the oldest and most infamous murderous rampages. In 1888, a serial killer struck in London's Whitechapel neighborhood, killing five women, all prostitutes, and dismembering their bodies. Police speculated that the murderer was a surgeon, butcher, or expert with a scalpel. By mailing letters documenting the acts, the killer made fun of the neighborhood and the police. Over the years, a number of suspects have been named, but the murderer has never been found. Second person on the list is Jeffrey Dahmer, only 18 years old when he began killing. Jeffrey Dahmer wasn't caught until 1991, when a would be victim managed to flee and guided authorities back to Dahmer's Milwaukee, Wisconsin, home. Photos of dismembered bodies and body parts littering the flat there revealed some of the gory particulars of his life of murder. Even his acid vat for disposing of victims was there. Dahmer killed a total of 17, largely young black guys. He was murdered by a fellow prisoner in 1994 after serving two prison sentences, the first for molestation and the second for murder, third person on the list is Harold Shipman. At least 218 victims are thought to have died at the hands of Harold Shipman, widely known as Dr. Death, however the actual number is probably closer to 250. Between 1972 and 1998, this doctor worked in two different offices while maintaining his London-based practice and killing. He wasn't discovered until several people raised a red flag, including an undertaker who was shocked by the quantity of cremation certificates Shipman was involved in and the fact that the majority of the cases involved elderly women who were discovered to have passed away in bed during the day rather than at night. Police botched the case, and Shipman continued killing until he became avaricious and attempted to rig a will for a victim that named him beneficiary, raising suspicions in the deceased's daughter. He was ultimately found guilty in 2000, and in 2004 he committed suicide in jail. Coming in fourth is John Wayne Gacy, John Wayne Gacy was a construction worker who was well-liked by his suburban neighbors. He was also active in politics and occasionally performed as a clown at children's birthday parties. No clown, he wasn't. In 1978, Gacy was suspected after a 15-year-old boy who had been last seen with him vanished. It wasn't the first time that relatives of missing boys had blamed Gacy, but it was the first time that officials had paid attention to them. The smell of over 30 people buried in a four-foot crawl space beneath the Gacy residence was there when authorities were given access to the house thanks to a search warrant. He was put to death by lethal injection in 1994 after being found guilty on 33 counts of murder and extra counts of rape and torture. Coming in fifth is H. H. Holmes, Although Chicago has seen its fair share of murderers, H. H. Holmes, the chemist who converted a hotel into a torture facility, is probably the most eerie. Before the 1893 World's Fair, Holmes relocated to Chicago and began building a three-story hotel with a variety of sinister devices, including soundproof padding, gas lines, hidden passages and trapdoors, hallways that led to nowhere, chutes that led to the basement, and torture equipment strewn throughout a maze. Before the worst of what was to come, the gas permitted Holmes to put his guests to sleep, frequently on his operating tables. He then perpetrated life insurance scams and cremated the corpses in the building's furnace before selling the remains to medical colleges. Before being hung in 1896, he confessed to a total of more than 30 killings, which were only discovered after a fellow con man reported him for breaking a financial deal. In sixth place is Pedro Lopez, it's possible that one of the most prolific serial killers in history is still at large. More than 300 homicides in Pedro Lopez's native Colombia, as well as in Ecuador and Peru, have been connected to him. Tribal women made up at least one-third of those homicide victims. 
police discovered the graves of more than 50 of Lopez's teenage victims after his arrest in 1980. Later, after confessing to 240 additional murders in Colombia and Peru, he was found guilty of killing 110 girls in Ecuador. The Monster of the Andes was freed in 1998 for good behavior, thus he didn't even serve 20 years in prison. His whereabouts have been a mystery for more than 20 years. Finally in seventh place is Ted Bundy, many people in the United States were more than glad to give Ted Bundy the limelight he craved as a result of his killings. His hunting zone was the western United States, where an undetermined number of murders, mostly of college-age women, were occurring from Washington and Oregon all the way to Utah and Colorado. After being apprehended and found guilty of abduction in Colorado, Bundy fled the country and relocated to Florida, where he continued to commit more murders. As the alleged killer participated in what is said to have been the first murder trial to be broadcast on television, encouraged interviews, and boasted of his following, Bundy's final arrest and its aftermath captivated the attention of the country. He was ultimately put to death in an electric chair in 1989. Thanks for watching. Please drop a like, share and subscribe for more content and feel free to leave a comment.